Hi, in this video, I want to go over how to build an online Palo Alto lab using EVNG on your home network um, to allow you to study and practice some of the different commands and uh, configurations that Palo Alto has to offer. So this is going to be set up in my home lab at home, and I have my own EV and EVNG server, which I've done some a uh, couple different labs or um, blog posts about how to set that up. So you can go to letmetechu.com and it can show you how to do some of the different things like importing in some of the different images and stuff like that. So this is a basic setup here. We got a, v a PC that comes with EVNG. So it's just basically almost like a command line interface to let you do like ping commands, things like that. Then I have a switch here, which is just a switch, nothing crazy going on in there. Um, just, you know, a flat VLAN. And that's what's gonna connect any devices that I set up on this side to my inside um, Palo Alto IP address. So then we have a management. So this network here uh, basically allows me to set a, um, a IP address on the management interface. That way I can show you what I'm gonna do here using the GUI versus the CLI, which you can still do all of this using the CLI. I'll do another video on how to particularly do that. Um, with the CLI commands. And then I have an ISP router here that basically uh, basically will allow me to mimic um, doing pings to like 8.8.8.8 address, um, my default gateway out to the internet, stuff like that. So to get started here, you can get this little um, setup going on here. And once you get your management interface connected and you get the Palo Alto started, you'll probably need to wait about like five to 10 minutes because it's gonna take some time for you to be able to log in. So my, and once that does get started, you should be able to get the IP address of your management interface um, here at the top. And the login for, the default login is just admin admin. If you get a failure, don't wait don't or don't worry. It just is that you just didn't wait enough time there. So now that we know what that is, I'm going to go to the IP address of that management interface. And so I already had this lab set up and that's due to me already having the blog posts um, built beforehand. So I'm basically going to walk you through the blog post version of this um, just as a video for people who like to kind of learn um, more. So um, seeing it versus kind of reading it. So to get started, when you first come in, you're not gonna have any objects, you're not gonna have any um, network interfaces created, you're also not gonna have any policies or NAT configurations. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna create some interfaces and, well actually we're gonna create some zones. So zones are basically what allows you to kind of um, segment off portions of your network, whether it be physical, um, virtual um, interfaces, and that way you can kind of control the traffic, um, whether it's inner, inner zone traffic, intra zone traffic. So, you know, by default, anything that's not within its zone won't be able to communicate. So I have two zones here. I got my trusted zone, which is my inside interface or inside um, anything that's internal to my network. And then I have our outside zone, which is anything that's out um, untrusted, which in our case here is going to be our Internet connection. So to create these two, you're just gonna do an add here at the bottom. And you can name these whatever you want. The naming doesn't matter, but I basically had trusted inside zone, untrusted inside zone. The log settings you can keep as none. And type, we can, we're gonna do layer three. And if you wanna do any of this log forwarding stuff, you can, uh, it doesn't matter for this lab. And then for your interfaces, um, well, actually, let's go back here. So it, you can actually create this without having the interfaces set up. So if I show you, I'll go, let's do um, Kevin zone just to show you what's going to happen here. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to create that Kevin zone, but no interface. If I go back to my interfaces and I go to this one here. I can then choose. Uh, where is it at here? Oop, interface type, layer three, 
virtual router. I'm going to go default. We'll talk about that here in a sec. And then you can see now Kevin's own. So any tracker that comes across um, that uh, interface uh, one Ethernet one slash three is going to be uh, a part of that Kevin zone. OK, and you can only be a part of one zone, so you can't have interfaces in multiple zones there. And then for the IPA4 address, I'm going to do static. And let's just get into the ones that we need to create. So looking at this configuration here, we have interface 1 slash 2 and 1.1. So I got 1.1, 1.2. So 1.1 is going to be my outside IP address. So if you look here, I created an outside interface, layer 3. And it's part of my untrusted zone in the default router. And under IP4, you want to do static and then outside IP. And now to create it inside of here, you just do an add new address. Just call it outside IP, whatever you want to call it. And then for the um, type IP net mask, and then do 1.1.1.2 slash 24 and hit OK. Hit cancel there because I already have that created. And then we want to do the same thing for our Ethernet 1 slash 2. Everything else inside IP, layer 3, trusted zone. And then for the inside IP, you want to do a 192. Well, let me just do here. Do a 192.168.1.0 or 1.2 slash 24. And you can see the, uh, if you go under objects, you can see here, we got 1.1.1.2 and then 192.168.1.2 slash 24. So that's where the objects get placed once they get created. So now that we have those uh, set, you got your uh, interfaces created. Um, we got our zones created. Now we're gonna wanna go under virtual routers and we are going to set a static route that says anything that needs to get out to the internet, go to this 1.1.1 um, address, which is our next hop. Now you're probably wondering where is, where is that at in our configuration? If you set up some type of um, device and it doesn't have to be, um, you know, I put a router here, you can put something else. You don't have to do any configuration, but just to show what I'm doing here, show IP brief you can see that this 0.0, .0 is 1.1.1.1 which is here and then our loopback address i just created an address for 8.8.8.8 .8 so that's just going to mimic like another address to try to get to um, from my inside network and if i do a show ip route we can see we have routes going um you know this is directly connected so this 1.0.0.0 slash 8, 2.0.0 slash 8 is directly connected, and the loopback address there. So now with that static route set up, we'll go back to that tab. You get that set up. That's all we need there. And just to show you the full gamut of what's going on, that's everything you should have set up there. So now once you get that set up, we can go in to our policies. Now we need to define um, our inside zone to say, hey, anything from the inside zone that's trying to get to the outside untrusted zone allow. So if we go, let me open this up here. Uh, let's see if we can do an edit somewhere here. Okay. So basically this is, um, I have tags, you don't have to worry about that. That's just so I can color code the, um, the zones there. NAT type is gonna be IPv IPv4. The original packet is gonna be source, is gonna be the trusted inside zone. Destination zone is gonna be untrusted. That's the destination interface. The service is gonna be any. And then source address any, destination address any so don't worry about that part and then for the translated packet part so what's this going to translate to is going to be dynamic ip and port so basically we're going to use um, a dynamic some type some dynamic dynamic port 
that's going to use our outside IP addresses interface. So the address types interface, the interface is 1.1, and what we're translated to, uh, to is the outside IP, which is that 1.1.1.1. So let's see here. We hit cancel there since we already have that. And then, so that's going to be our NAT um, configuration. For our security configuration, this is what's going to say, hey, this is what's going to allow the traffic from um, the trusted zone to the untrusted zone. So source, trusted inside zone, inner, inside zone, don't worry about the user. The destination is untrusted zone. And then the action here is allow. So that's what that's for there now. And these are our default um, policies that basically allow intrazone um, communication or intrazone communication allows, but then interzone communication by default, it denies. So if, and then if I think if I might have mis said this, this is for NAT. So this is anything that's coming from the inside network to the outside um, network. Uh, for the internet connections to um, basically give it a NATed IP address because you can't route um, externally RFC 1918 addresses. So now if we go back to our topology and we click on the VPC one, I have this in, if we do a show IP, the 192.168.1.2 address, so, or, or um, 192.168.1.0 slash 24 network, and then the IP is 192.168.1.6. So we're gonna try to ping our default gateway just first to make sure we can get to that. So ping 192.168.1.2. Okay, so we can get there. And then, so let's now ping the outside IP address of the ISP. Um, router there. So we'll ping 1.1.1.1. So that works. And now let's try to ping the uh, loopback address. Okay, that works there. So now with that being said, we fully have a fully working um, Palo Alto Networks firewall set up to be able to route outside to the internet, get to a view, it's, gu it's GUI, and then we can also do anything that we need to within the uh, CLI here as well. So show interface all. So we got our interfaces here. So you can do everything within this as well. So now this can help you kind of advance. Um, you can maybe spin up another Palo Alto, put it in like a high availability configuration, do some different um, policies, maybe to go into different zones. Um, different types of uh, services, things like that. So again, hope this was able to help you kind of um, get something started. If you have any questions, drop me a comment down below. I'll be sure to kind of help where I can. Again, check out my blog, letmetechyou.com. Like and subscribe to the channel. And again, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time.